What is public works? We get asked that question more than you think. The simple definition is that public works is a combination of things like roads and bridges and water mains and management practices like hydrant flushing and asset management and policies like stormwater quality and water regulations and the people needed to provide an acceptable quality of life. Hello, my name is Carl Fetters and I am the director of the Department of Public Works for the city of Battle Creek. I've been with the city for almost four years and in my current role, less than four months. I am a registered professional engineer with 17 years of local and state government experience which, uh, with a bachelor's degree in civil engineering from Michigan State University and a master's in public administration from Western. In a minute, I will introduce my DPW team who are responsible for 165 employees and a budget of nearly $60 million annually. The staff at the DPW includes four separate employee groups. Non-representative employees consist of the managers from different divisions within the DPW. They are the green boxes on our organizational chart. They provide division direction for our DPW six different divisions. The DPW divisions are engineering, field services, environmental, fleet, records, and utilities. Members of the Battle Creek Supervisory Association represent our foreman level, which are red boxes on our organizational chart. They provide the oversight and guidance in fulfilling the division's plan goals on a day-to-day -day basis. Employees on the organizational chart that are in blue are from the Service Employees International Union, who fulfill technical tasks like engineering, lab analysis, and clerical duties. Finally, are the members of the American Federation of State, County, and Municipal Employees represented in orange on the chart. These are considered our frontline workers in build, maintain, and replace our infrastructure. You can see that it takes all kinds of men and women to do our job in the third largest city by land area in Michigan. It takes laborers, heavy equipment operators, carpenters, electricians, mechanics, scientists, engineers, surveyors, plan operators, supervisors, clerical, and managers to tackle the wide range of responsibilities. The employees of the, at the DPW have more interaction with the residents of the city of Battle Creek than any other department. These interactions largely go unnoticed, but during critical weather and natural and man-made disasters, we like to say that we are the first ones in and the last ones to leave. So to start off, I'd like my management team to introduce themselves and give a brief summary of their divisions. Hello, my name is Gregory Rickmore and I'm the traffic engineering manager. I've been with the city for 40 years, that entire time as an engineer in the public works department. I'm responsible for traffic science and signals. Our duties there include the installation and maintenance of both signs and signals. I'm also responsible for traffic studies. We use traffic studies when responding to traffic complaints. Frequent complaints include excessive traffic speeds and requests to install new signals. We collect and analyze data to try to determine the best ways to solve the traffic problems that residents and visitors alert us to. My name is Todd Gerber and I'm the Field Services Superintendent. I've been with the city for nearly 25 years, with the last 12 in my current position. Prior to that, I also served as the DPW records manager, public works infrastructure coordinator, and engineering technician too. My former career has also included local civil en engineering and the land surveying firm. Field services includes all aspects of routine road, park, and downtown maintenance. Activities such as tree trimming, pothole patching, snow plowing, and turf maintenance fall under our purview. Funding for routine road maintenance comes primarily from Act 51, or the state of Michigan gas tax that you pay while fueling your vehicle. For many of our operations, maintenance sections are utilized to help track our work. My name is Todd Everson, Assistant Field Services Superintendent. My career with the City of Battle Creek started January of 2001 in the engineering department as a project technician, and eventually moving up to a project engineer in 2007. I've been in my current role for the past four years with over 20 years of public works engineering experience, which includes project management, inspection, and surveying. Kurt Tribbett, 
I've been in the city for 21 years with the first 15 years as a project and drainage engineer prior to starting my newer position as the engineering administrator. I've had the amazing opportunity to wear many hats with this position from overseeing pipe, lift station, and plant improvement projects, sewer collection crews, and environmental service team to managing multiple professional and service contracts or assisting with BCU site projects, asset management, lead service line replacement, and storm drainage policies. There is plenty to do. It all at times seemed kind of daunting, but with a great team of managers and staff, the tasks are attainable and fulfilling. The best part of this job is working with peers and staff with the common goal to make public works more effectively and efficient, efficiently for our citizens with each and every day striving to be better than the day before. Hi, I'm Patty Hoke Meliwish and I'm the Environmental and Storm Service Manager at the City of Battle Creek. I've only been with the city since January of 2020, but I've been working in the environmental field for over 30 years. The Environmental Services Department includes the city's solid waste program, which includes the garbage, yard waste, and recycling hauling, um, includes drinking water protection, stormwater management, and also public outreach and events related to environmental protection and sustainability within the city. Our job is to make sure the city of Battle Creek is doing our part to protect the environment within the city and our community. We are also here to help our 51,000 residents learn what they can do to protect our drinking water, area lakes and streams, and how to recycle right and keep materials out of the landfill. My name is Andrew Michalowski and I'm the DPW records manager. I've been with the city of Battle Creek for 15 years now and it's been a great place to work and ingrain myself into the community. I oversee the records division, which is responsible for protecting the health of Battle Creek's infrastructure by providing advanced technological solutions for public works operations. This is important for empowering our employees with knowledge and the history of our system. We implement applications such as geographic information systems or GIS and asset management work order systems to help determine the location of underground and overhead infrastructure. And we also track relevant data and costs associated with our operation. We also maintain as-built utility drawings and other relevant documents that we make easily accessible to our employees through the records portal. Lastly, we oversee MISTIG utility locates. So when a resident or an excavator is digging into the ground, they need to first call 811 and all the companies that have infrastructure buried underground in that area will mark the location of their lines with spray paint or flags to help prevent underground pipes and conduit from being damaged during excavation. Our division consists of four full-time employees that are assigned to various roles to make this a successful operation. My name is Steve Seaman. I am the fleet manager. My path in the city started with the field services department in 2006, and I've had the opportunity to serve fleet since 2010. The fleet services team is tasked with the maintenance, repairs, and replacement schedules of over 450 pieces of equipment for all of the DPW community services, parks, police, and fire departments. We also have intergovernmental agreements to help neighboring communities to assist with maintenance and repairs of their equipment. Beyond just equipment, fleet oversees the DBW facilities, including the operation and maintenance of our diesel, gasoline, and propane fueling station. We track and supply the fuel used by all of the departments served and Battle Creek Transit. And thank you for being our customers. I'm Perry Hart, Utility Administrator with the city. I have an associate's degree from Grand Rapids Community College, and I'm also a certified operator at the D1 S1 water system level in the state of Michigan and hold a class B water system operator in Minnesota. I've been in the safe drinking water industry for 35 years, been with the city of Battle Creek for 13 years, first off as the water superintendent and now in the utility administrator role. In my role here, I'm involved in providing safe drinking water, collecting sanitary sewer, and wastewater treatment services for the multiple municipal systems in the Battle Creek area. I am honored to have an incredible team of exceptional people performing the many tasks involved, from withdrawing water from the protected well field, treated it, treating it to required standards, transporting it through over 300 miles of water main and water towers, 
measuring the water for the billing of water and sewer use, to the collection of sewer waste through 300 plus miles of pipe, and the final wastewater treatment before reintroducing the water back to nature in the Kalamazoo River. These are the tasks that take nearly 100 employees working with me and my peers, Kurt, Rodney, Carl, and Patty. It's a team effort and we are fortunate to have the A-Team bringing our services to you, our valued customers, 24-7-365. Hello, I'm Rodney Clifton, our wastewater superintendent. I've been with the city for the past 13 years. I was born and raised in Battle Creek and I'm honored to serve the citizens of this great city. I have a bachelor's degree of science in environmental science from Lake Superior State University and a Class A sewage treatment works operator's license from the state of Michigan. Our wastewater plant treats an average flow of 9.2 million gallons each day of residential, commercial, and industrial wastewater from the, the city and the five surrounding jurisdictions. We have an activated sludge process here to remove harmful contaminants from the wastewater stream and discharge clean, safe water to the Kalamazoo River. The sludge that is removed from the water is converted into biosolids through a lime stabilization process and beneficially used as fertilizer and soil amendment on agricultural fields during eight months of the year. During the winter months, when we cannot access agricultural fields, we dispose of our biosolids in a landfill. We are currently piloting a process to convert our biosolids into a compost that can be beneficially utilized by more potential customers. We have a very talented team of managers and they represent an even more talented team of workers that uh, accomplish the task at hand. So instead of each of these managers giving a narrative of the scope of work that they handle, I thought it would be better to walk through a normal day of a resident of the city of Battle Creek and the interactions that they may have with the DPW that go unnoticed. So to start out, the alarm clock goes off, you swing your feet off the side of the bed and you feel nature's call. You stagger your way into the bathroom and start your morning routine. If you're my age and like me, the first thing you do when waking up is to rush to the bathroom. While there on your throne, you may be checking your schedule or scrolling through various social media sites or watching YouTube videos. As you finish the business at hand using appropriate toilet paper, and then with a voluntary flick of the hand for a royal flush, the deposit spins down out of sight. That's where our crew of 13 sewer employees take over. They are there to maintain 380 miles of sanitary sewer with an additional 200 miles of storm sewer, which ensures that your flush makes it to the, its way to the nearest lift station. To do that, our crew inspects infrastructure before any road improvements, so we don't end up digging twice. We're also the, into the fifth year of a 10-year televising program to get robotic cameras in all sanitary sewer mains to help understand the condition and capital improvement needs of the system. The flush doesn't end with my division though. This is where we take over. A team of seven lift station mechanics along with the help of a team of five electricians and apprentices maintain the 126 lift stations within the system to ensure that the 9.2 million gallons per day of wastewater makes its way to the wastewater treatment plant. 365 days a year, 24 hours a day, 12 operators, nine mechanics, and four lab technicians work to ensure that the wastewater is properly treated, that the equipment is serviced and ready to perform, and that all state and federal requirements are met. In the end, the treated liquid portion is sent to the Kalamazoo River and the solid waste is either stabilized and land applied to agricultural fields as nutrient-rich biosolids or hauled to the landfill when the farm fields are frozen. Hopefully someday the solids will be composted in, into a sustainable product. Back in the bathroom, you head your way over to the sink to wash your hands. Before the water comes out of your fixtures, our five operators and foremen at the Verona Wealth Treatment Plant and Pumping Facility have treated the water for the removal of radon, iron, and manganese. They also treated the water with chlorine for disinfection, added fluoride for dental health, and phosphate to protect against lead and copper corrosion within the water pipes. They are at it 365 days a year, 24 hours a day. 
The water then travels through a network of over 300 miles of pipe that is maintained by 14 equipment operators and four foremen who regularly exercise the 3,300 valves in the water system and flush the 3,700 hydrants, in addition to the repair of leaks at all hours of the day and night in all the weather. Once the water reaches your house, it travels through one of 19,000 meters in the system, which are maintained by a team of five employees. They make their measurement is, they make sure the measurement is accurate and collected on a regular basis through our electronic meter reading equipment so that the utility billing staff can produce bills to generate revenue. Let's not forget that your morning coffee is reliant on all of these efforts. Thanks, Barry. Hopefully you have more, the, more time than just for just a cup of coffee. So now you're in your kitchen, you grab your bacon, eggs, yogurt, some fresh fruit and milk and start cooking breakfast. When you're done frying your bacon, you know what to do with your grease because environmental services of the DPW has educated you on why you need to can the grease instead of dumping it down the drain where it will clog the pipes. After breakfast, you start cleaning up. You toss your garbage in the trash and you rinse and dry your yogurt container and milk jug and place them in your recycling cart. Loose, not in a bag, of course. The contract with the city's municipal solid waste hauler is managed by dedicated staff at the DPW who spend time responding to service needs and educating our customers about the do's and don'ts of recycling. We also take measures to ensure industries, businesses, and individuals within the city are doing their part to protect the city's drinking water, lakes, and rivers. So you finished your morning routine, you grab your keys, and you head out to your car for a commute to work downtown. As you motor towards downtown on one of our nearly 294 miles of streets in Battle Creek, you pass by a street sweeping crew helping keep the streets and gutters free of debris. This crew of four equipment operators and a foreman typically sweep the city three times a year. Seeing that crew reminds you that you have a couple brown paper bags of leaves and yard waste in the trunk of your car that need to be dropped off at Bryce Pit. The equipment operator Bryce will take those leaves along with the others dropped off throughout the year and turn them into rich compost that we make available the following year. While you continue on your way, you notice a tree trimming crew taking down a dead maple tree. Our crew of six equipment operators and foreman trims, removes, grinds the stump, applies topsoil from Bryce Pit, and grass seed where the tree once proudly stood. As you continue on your way, you come across our asphalt crew, patching the road after one of the utility crews needed to cut the road to maintain their facility. This crew of seven uh, equipment operators and foremen will place and roll the new hot asphalt to make the road safe and drivable. Typically in the fall, this crew may also be applying melted rubber while crack filling to help maintain the longevity of the road surface. Not far away, you come across a team of three patching potholes, which you're glad to see as you hit that one on your way home last night. You may also come across one of our operators regrading the gravel shoulder to help control stormwater erosion, which can deteriorate the edge of the road. Around the corner, you'll find our roadside mower. This operator keeps the vegetation off the sides of the road, not only helping vision, but helping keep the vegetation from scratching your car. As you continue your commute, you may not think about the many signs and miles of pavement markings that guide you safely to your destination. It's hard not to notice the red signal ahead, but you may not know that the eight employees of the Signs and Signals Division also maintain all 144 traffic signals and more than 100 tra flashing traffic beacons throughout Calhoun County. All these signs, signals, and beacons require regular maintenance which our Signs and Signals employees perform. But what if something more than regular maintenance is needed? What if, what if it becomes apparent that something needs to be done at a location with frequent crashes or excessive traffic speeds? What if there are frequent delays or and congestion at a traffic signal? What if a non-signalized intersection can be improved by installing a new signal? That's where our traffic studies employees step in. Besides me, we have a technician and another engineer to collect and analyze traffic data, review police crash reports, and design ways to correct these problems. So you finish your commute and you arrive in the downtown Battle Creek and park in a parking structure which is maintained through a partnership between the city of Battle Creek and a private company which is administrated by DPW staff. At lunch, we decide to take a walk downtown along the linear path while the weather cooperates. 
As you enjoy a walk along the linear path with the fall beauty of our downtown and the leaves turning, you notice one of five downtown workers mowing grass and removing trash from one of our abundant trash receptacles dispersed throughout the central business district. This portion of the path is part of over 28 miles of walking biking paths scattered throughout the city. The rest of the crew you notice is busy working on preparing to shut down the irrigation system as winter is coming. Along with mowing the linear path, you have may seen Cerro City Development Corporation crews mowing one of the 30 plus scattered parks throughout our great city. Approaching the intersection of McCamley and Michigan, children are running through water squirting upwards at Wave Square. While passing Festival Market Square on your way to full blast, one of two maintenance and repair employees is, replaced, is busy replacing a bracket, damage caused by the storm the previous season evening as their fellow co-worker is going around checking on playground equipment in the parks. So in order to keep these services uh, in order, the DPW also relies on equipment, not just employees, uh, to do the job efficiently at hand. Yes, while equipment and vehicles are used every day to assist with the city's services, the fleet team is working behind the scenes with each department to keep up the preventative maintenance and repairs on each of its assets. It is important that each piece of equipment stay properly maintained for efficiency, effectiveness, and for the safety of our operators and our community. Along with maintenance activities, our team will remarket our old equipment and prepare new equipment for service. After receiving a new piece of equipment, Fleet will add city decals, two-way radios, and do any amount of custom work needed to add specialty tools or equipment specific to each department's activities. That's just our day-to-day -day work. Our big work starts when we split up the team and pivot to 24-7 operations, supporting our departments during weather events or storm cleanup activities. We will work during the day and days, if not weeks after a weather event to make sure all of our equipment is repaired, serviced, and ready to respond anytime needed. As you continue your walk, you begin to realize the size and scope of the city and wonder how every, and everything is kept organized. A lot of our infrastructure was built decades or even a century ago. So how do we know where it's located and what is in the ground? And thinking towards the future, how do we get the most life out of our assets and make smart data-driven decisions when a repair or replacement of infrastructure is needed? And that's where the four employees in the records division come in and help. Uh, besides keeping our online maps and records current, our staff helps organize and analyze data such as labor, material, and equipment costs on all DPW infrastructure assets. So managers can make informed decisions on operational responses and capital improvements. Uh, so you can he see here on this screen, a uh, snapshot from our online GIS map. The blue lines represent water pipes, the green lines are sanitary sewer, and the red lines are storm pipes. We can easily see from this overhead map where various structures are located, the size of the pipes, and what direction they're flowing. Uh, we can also click on a structure. In this example, I clicked on a hydrant, and we can see data associated with that hydrant, like the year it was installed, what type of hydrant it is, and various other information that's relevant to our water division staff. With a lot of our facilities being buried underground, this information is incredibly helpful in making timely and informed decisions on how to fix a problem. If that hydrant needs to be replaced, our water division will, first they'll call in Mystig. You know, we wanna make sure that our lines, un underground pipes and lines are marked so they can proceed with excavating safely. Next, they'll create a replace hydrant work order in CityWorks. So you can see on this screen, um, there's all sorts of relevant information, such as the date the work was completed, along with the materials that were used, and the labor hours. They're all tracked on this work order. This data is stored and backed up onto a database that allows us to run an inquiry on whatever information we'd like to report on. So, Everything I've shown here is critically important for our current and future leaders to have a solid gra grasp on what's happening around the city with the infrastructure we're responsible for managing. 
there are many different ways we can leverage this technology and I see a lot of future opportunities that we'll continue to grow into. So as you finish up your day at work, you jump in your car and you head on home and on your way you see some construction signs ahead. Uh, but before those signs can be erected, lots of planning had to be accomplished. The seven employees in the engineering division have identified projects, work with other divisions and private utilities who may have worked in the same area, obtained the proper permits and approvals, completed design, bid the project, gained commission approval, and are administering the construction. You don't mind the slight delay because you know that once the project is done, you, the results will serve the communities for years to come. As you can see, we have a very high level exposure to the residents of City of Battle Creek and the surrounding communities. We also have very talented and de dedicated team that is always searching for the best solution for our city. One thing that makes the DPW team unique is that unlike most other departments, when we do our job efficiently and effectively, we are invisible to the public. I hope you've enjoyed meeting our team and learning about what we do. If you have questions, feel free to reach out to me at 269-966-3490 or by email at cefetters at battlecreekmi.gov.